Hey guys, welcome to worship. We're so glad that you joined us. Why don't we start things off by turning on our candles? You know, sometimes it seems like after Christmas Day, people just pull the rug out from underneath you. You celebrate the big day, and then that's it. The presents have been opened, the cookies are all gone, the radio stations have all gone back to playing regular music. Well, that is not happening here tonight. I mean, we don't have any presents for you to open, and I think we finally finished the leftover cookies from the Christmas Journey event. But we still have Christmas music left in us, so let's sing. Joy to the Beth, that was awesome. Let's all fold our hands and say an opening prayer together. Lord, we ask you to be with us tonight and to help us hear the message our hearts need to hear. Help us to understand how to celebrate the fact that your son Jesus is still living among us. Help us see ways in which we can invite him into our lives and work to make a difference in the world. We thank you, Lord, for your son, who was born on that night so long ago. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Did you all sing that line with Beth? Did you sing it loudly? We have done a lot of work to get to where we're at tonight. In our first week of Advent, we realized our surroundings, and maybe even ourselves, were a mess. So we got right to work forming cleanup crews to get ourselves all neat and tidy. And then in our third week of Advent, we decked our halls, making everything perfect for the arrival of Jesus. Last week, we took the time to pause and wait on the threshold for Jesus to enter our world. And he did. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas day, even if it might have looked a little bit different than your usual Christmas celebrations. And now that Christmas Day has come and gone, and the presents have been opened, and the cookies have been eaten, eaten, and for some, their company has left. So what now? All of that work to get here, and what now? Moms and dads are going to start taking down the decorations and getting the house back into its regular pre-decked state. We've been hearing fewer and fewer Christmas songs on the radio. We're getting ourselves ready to enter into a new year, which might be a bit more stressful than usual, considering what a bust 2020 has been. What now? The title of our message this week is Enjoying the Company. You're probably looking at each other wondering which company I'm talking about since all of yours left over the weekend. 
Remember, though, that the company we have been preparing for all along wasn't your grandparents. It wasn't your loud aunt and crazy uncle. It wasn't your cousins, even though it's always fun to get together with cousins, isn't it? The company we've been preparing for over the last four weeks was Jesus. We were preparing ourselves to, once again, celebrate the arrival of Jesus. We were preparing ourselves for a birthday party, if you will. Jesus' birthday party. I hope you celebrated it well. And now that the big day has come and gone, I hope you'll remember to continue to enjoy your company. Because the company we've been waiting for is still here. He's with us all the time, really. And part of enjoying the company is celebrating the company. Enjoying the company means that we celebrate the fact that Christ is still among us now. We celebrate the fact that a long time ago, a man came to this earth to change our lives forever. We all have undoubtedly heard the story of Jesus' arrival at some point over the last month. The angels, the shepherds, no room at the inn. We know it well, don't we? Well, what then? What next? What happened after Jesus was born? We don't always spend a lot of time looking at that this time of the year, do we? Thankfully, in chapter 2 of the gospel book he wrote, Luke lets us know what Mary, Joseph, and Jesus did following his birth. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was even conceived. Then it was time for their purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So Jesus' parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon, he was righteous and devout and eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He was a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is a glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed him. And he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, and many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher and she was very old. Her husband had died, and when they had only been married for seven years. She lived then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. It may not have been a celebration as we think of them with balloons and confetti and cake, but you can bet that this man Simeon was celebrating when he realized he was in the company of the Messiah. This was the day he had been waiting for for a long time. This was the reason he had come to the temple every single day. He was waiting 
on the arrival of the Messiah. Simeon had dedicated his life to waiting, watching, and listening so that he wouldn't miss this arrival of the Messiah. Can you imagine that moment? Simeon realizes that Jesus is the Messiah. He takes him in his arms and he praises God. His words have long been considered a hymn of praise and are used in evening worship services to bring an end to the day. And then we meet Anna, another prophet who was there at the temple. Anna comes by as Simeon is singing his praises and she can't help but sing them as well. In fact, she continues telling people about the Messiah. Did you hear that in our scripture when it said she talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem? So what does this mean for us today? Why should this story be important to us? Why should we be celebrating even though Christmas is over? The fact is, my friends, that Jesus is still with us. He's still here to work among us. And that is a reason to celebrate. Jesus remains in the hearts and minds of the faithful. And that is a reason to celebrate. Jesus came so that we could live our lives the way we are living them now. And that is a reason to celebrate. Jesus loves us and values us, and calls us his children. And that is a reason to celebrate. And all of these things are also the reasons why we work for Jesus, why we should work with Jesus. I saw this awesome reading on Facebook the other day and felt like God was nudging me. I felt like I needed to share it and talk about it. So listen to Beth as she reads. When the carols have been stilled, when the star-topped tree is taken down, when family and friends are gone home, when we are back to our schedules, the work of Christmas begins to welcome the refugee, to heal a broken planet, to feed the hungry, to build bridges of trust, not walls of fear, to share our gifts, to seek justice and peace for all people, to bring Christ's light to the world. The work of Christmas begins. We've celebrated his arrival, and now we need to get to work. The work of Christmas lasts all year long. The work of Christmas can be, like Anna the prophet did, to tell others about Jesus. The work of Christmas can be donating money or food to the food pantry. The work of Christmas can be standing up for what is good and right. It can be defending someone who's being treated unfairly. It can be making friends with someone who doesn't have many friends. The work of Christmas can be praying, praying for people who are lost and hurt, who are abandoned and scared who are in danger and seek safety. The work of Christmas can be sharing a smile with a stranger or helping out a neighbor. It can be complimenting someone or telling them they've done a good job. The work of Christmas begins and it begins in our hearts and souls. It begins as a spark or the strike of a match and it can grow into a fire. It's in every one of us, trust me. Sometimes the work of Christmas is the work of discovering just what we want to work for. We need to look inside ourselves and decide what we can do to work for Jesus. What we can do to be the hands and feet and mouths of Jesus today in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our state, country, and world. We need to enjoy our company, embrace our company, celebrate our company. And in that celebration, we need to help others get to know our company. We need to let others know why we're celebrating, what we're working for. 
The work of Christmas begins today. I encourage you to get to work. If you don't know what type of work you want to do, look inside yourself. Talk with your parents or friends or pastors. You have it in you. Go find it. Get out there and do the work of Christmas. Amen. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is Thank you so much for singing along, and thank you for being here with us again tonight. We are always so happy to have you join us. Before we go, let's do our benediction, which is our church mission statement. Who are we? We are a missionary force of Christians. What do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To whom? To all. Where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. Go in peace. Have a great week. Bye, guys.